Hi guys, what you are looking at right now is the Canon R5C. Well, you're looking at me being shot by the Canon R5C. And I will admit it, when this camera first came out, I was one of those people who said, I don't get it. Why did they even make this camera? But now I have used it for about a month and I get it. Oh buddy, I get it. Let's talk about it. So for the past month, I've been using this camera for some documentary work, some photography, some uh, YouTube videos, and of course, because I'm me, I took it out into the streets and did a little vlogging with it as well. But really what I want to impart to you in this video is what I think makes this camera so special. And speaking of special, the people over at Camera Canada who did not sponsor this video, they just, they have a special place in my heart because they lent me this camera and this 15 to 35 f 2.8 L lens, they lent me this thing for a full calendar month and just no strings attached. They were just like, yeah, go have fun, play with it. We want to support, they support the little guys. Uh, fantastic. Or are they devious? Because they knew, they knew that I was mostly a Sony shooter and that I would get bitten by the Canon bug, the cinematographer bug. And I would go buy a bunch of cinema lenses and cinema bodies and you, you, you're, you're devious. Wonderful people, if you're Canadian especially, go shop at Camera Canada. So what does make this so special in my not so humble opinion? Well, you have the photo capabilities of the Canon R5, uh, minus the IBIS, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you have the photo capabilities of one of the best photo cameras in the history of civilization when you think about it and you mash that together with an 8K 60 raw full frame cinema camera for a price that is less than almost all of Canon's other cinema cameras. Do you see what I'm saying? It's bonkers. I mean, just look at the image that you're getting out of this camera. I mean, look at this image, first of all, but also look at the comedians here. I was doing a uh, bit of a test for my documentary work that I'm trying to do about Toronto stand-up comedians here in Canada, and uh, Monty Scott and uh, Frank Spadone were nice enough to sit down for a little interview and also some camera tests. And these, these guys are trolls, hard to look at. Really, I'm kidding. They're Adonis's, wonderful looking men whose raw animal magnetism has been brought out by the Canon cinema camera. Because this camera in all the tests does have more dynamic range actually than the Canon R5, which is a very capable video camera, especially now that they've fixed a lot of the overheating issues. But this camera still, the R5C still has more dynamic range. And the 8K RAW, that may seem like overkill to a lot of people, and I'm sure it is, but for me, it would definitely be a really big help because in those situations where I'm doing those documentaries, you know, it's nice to have movement in the frame. I can punch in for from 8K because I'll be, you know, distributing it in 4K so I can punch in, I can have slider-like movements without bringing sliders or extra cameras. And that is just such a nice thing to have with one camera. And if you don't wanna use the 8K, the 4K is all downsampled from 8K. So it still looks fantastic, including 4K 120, wonderful. You also have the ability to not just shoot full frame, but you can also shoot Super 35 and Super 16, which is fantastic if you wanna get more reach out of the lens that you have on. Just the option of being able to do those things is really great. You have dual base ISO of 800 and 3200, which I think is very useful. If you have like two ISOs of like 800 and 12,800, when are you ever going up to 12,800? Why is your lighting that bad? But maybe you need a little boost, you know, it's just a little too dim or your lights aren't quite strong enough, then you can just go to, you know, ISO 3200 and get that nice clean image. I think that is very usable and uh, very good. You get all those cinema features that you want, like shutter angle, waveform, vector scope, right on the LCD, a false color, right there on the LCD screen. It also has dedicated time code in, which is essential for a lot of shooters. It has a one touch custom white balance. And that is just a dream for me on Canon cameras. It does take the whole frame. I do wish that uh, it had a little square in the center, the way that the Sony does that you could move around, but it just takes the whole frame, but still one touch on the back. It is an excellent implementation for getting your custom 
white balance. And speaking of the LCD, it's a beautiful touch screen. It very responsive, looks great, works great, and also has quick menus, three quick menus on the LCD screen itself. So between the customization of all of those buttons on the back of the camera and the front of the camera, and then the LCD screen with the quick menus, you just, you never really have to dive into the menus once you set up the camera the way you want. So many frame rates and codecs. There is also anamorphic modes where you can de-squeeze. There's three different de-squeeze modes. I wish it had a few more, but it does have three, so uh, that's great. And the thing just works. None of those weird quirks that I have on my lower priced Canon cameras with the uh, you know external monitors and the LCD going black. The LCD is still fully functional, fully usable. You can put the menu up on the monitor if you want. You can just have a full screen readout. You can record to the monitor if it's an external recorder and record internally as well. It just works. But there are some things that you need to be aware of to make sure that this camera is for you. And number one is autofocus. The autofocus in uh, photos is fantastic. In video, it is not using the same autofocus system as the R5 in video. It has their cinema focus. And while uh, by most people's accounts, this is the best focusing system in a cinema camera. I just got an email, I'm very popular. While it is one of the best focusing systems in terms of cinema cameras, it is still not a completely reliable focusing system. Now I have been using autofocus the entire time here, but I'm extremely well lit and I am pretty sure it hasn't lost me once. In fact, it has this cool little thing where I'm doing face only. It's a mode that you can do instead of just face priority. So. Even if I leave the screen, I'll fix my hair, even if I leave the screen, it doesn't flick to the back. It just stays where you are, which is great for interviews. However, once again, I would not use it. And here's an example why. So uh, uh, Monty Scott, the one of the comedians, was in focus the entire time. It never lost him, but he's very stoic, like a statue. He never left the light, whereas Frank Spadone, he leaned back just a little bit every now and again, and the camera struggled to keep focus on him. Now, I didn't have a fill light, and I had no room to put up even uh, a bounce card, so really, one side of his face was pretty dark, and the other was lit up pretty well, and then when he dipped back the camera, it just struggled. Now, it, I was doing that test on purpose to see if the camera would keep focus, and it did not. In the real situation, for the real documentary, I would always use manual focus because I wouldn't want something to go wrong. And so that might not be a big deal to a lot of cinematographers, but for you people out there that plan to rely on autofocus, this probably isn't your camera. The battery life, as many people mentioned, is uh, not great when you're using video. In photo, it is fine, but in video, it's very power hungry, just with the menu in general. The, I find the big problem is the actual setting up of your shots. The the recording time, you get a, over an hour generally of 4K recording, I find. If you're doing 8K, you might only get 20 minutes or so, but in uh, 4K, you get over an hour if you're just recording. But the problem is the battery drains very, very quickly while the, the camera is just on when it is in video mode. Now, if you press the play button, then uh, it will save battery that way for some reason. And also, if you turn it off, you will save a lot of battery. But just in the menu while you're like when I was setting up my lights at the comedy club and I was looking through the LCD you can just see the battery ticking down just draining very very fast as fast as when you are recording speaking of the battery you do need external power if you want to use the 8k 60 the camera just it's a power draw thing if you want to be able to use your lenses including manual lenses like if they're electronic lenses at all you will lose even manual focus so uh, you need to connect it to external power if you want to use 8K60, which is a bit of a bummer. It should have a different battery, but it is what it is. Speaking of things that should have full-size HDMI, everyone has bleated on about this for good reason. You really need a full-size HDMI when you have a cinema camera. You're going to be hooking it up to just many things. External monitor is definitely going to be hooked up, and you don't want those micro HDMI cables. They are a pain in the butt. They always break. They're very, very, they're very, they're very finicky just full size. Come on, Canon. No internal NDs. A lot of cinema cameras will have internal NDs, and that is a major benefit. Yeah, you can put them on your lens, or you can, you know, use a matte box or something like that. But uh, internal NDs are pretty common in cinema cameras. This one doesn't have it. 
And other things cinema cameras often have are uh, SDI inputs and XLR inputs in some way, even mini XLR inputs. But this camera has none of those things, so uh, you're going to need to find a different audio solution. You can not add LUTs, at least your own ones, to the camera. It does have a C-Log assist so you can see what you're doing uh, without it being totally muted and gray, but it would be nice to be able to use my own LUTs like I can on, say, my Panasonic cameras. Now, you'll probably use an external monitor and you'll load your LUTs onto that, but still, it would be nice to have it in the camera itself. Now, the lack of IBIS is not really a con for cinematographers. It is for the photographers because it's nice to have IBIS while you're taking pictures to keep away the shake. But uh, in terms of cinematography, these guys, they, they often want uh, to put it on gimbals, or mount it on a car, use it on a drone. People are putting them on drones these days. And any camera that has IBIS, the sensor can wobble around. So even if you turn the IBIS off, the sensor can still move when you have rapid movement and uh, the cinematographers don't want that. They want the uh, sensor to be fixed. So that is why Canon, as far as I know, did the thing with the fixed sensor because they knew we're gonna use this as a cinema camera. We don't want that sensor to be able to rattle around no matter what. And in terms of video, hand-holding video, you think you would not be able to do that, but actually the digital image stabilization is pretty good. Here is me out vlogging and you can take a look. So I am vlogging on the 15 to 35 F 2.8 and the Canon R5C. And uh, as you can see, the digital stabilization actually does a decent job. So you can vlog with this, but I would recommend the 16 millimeter F 2.8, much smaller lens. And that would be actually a doable vlogging setup. I mean, unless you know, you're superhumanly strong like myself, then you can easily do this for hours and hours and hours. But one thing I did not think the R5C could do was to be a decent vlogging camera. But I gotta tell you, it's really not bad here. This digital stabilization is pretty good. Still, don't vlog with this camera. Now there are much better choices out there in life for vlogging than the R5C, especially with a big heavy lens. But I was pleasantly surprised at how well the image stabilization worked, especially combined with the 15 to 35. So who is this for? Well, let's say you're a photojournalist, you know, the queen. She's called you over to old Buckingham Palace and she wants some pictures. Hey, take some pictures. Of I'm, I'm not gonna do a queen. Remember when Jon Stewart in The Daily Show, he's a hello. That used to make me laugh. Anyway, the queen wants you to take some photos of her. Then she wants you to do some video of her telling the world they need to watch Mark Bennett's Camera Crisis because it's the best channel on YouTube. You are completely covered. You have professional photos and you have a professional cinema rig just sitting there in one single camera. Like, you know, you're, you're wildlife photographers who want to do documentaries, narrative filmmakers who also want to have a fantastic photo camera on set for BTS behind the scenes. I think that means YouTubers. You could use it for YouTube as well. I personally think it's a little overkill for YouTube. So if I would only use it for YouTube if you're going to also buy the camera to do other things. I think that there are far more cost-effective ways to do YouTube out there. And personally for me, someone like me, I rely on autofocus a lot for my YouTube type things, for you know my personal projects and stuff like that. So uh, the R5 would probably suit me a lot better or one of the Sony cameras that I already have. So when it comes to the combination of things that this camera gives you, the only camera I can think of that's really in the same ballpark is uh, the Panasonic S1H. Maybe the S5 as well. That has some great video features and photo features, but the S1H I think competes more with this guy. The photo capabilities are not quite as good, but Panasonic have amazing uh, video features, but they certainly don't have 8K RAW, but uh, they do have 6K. But if you're someone who likes those Canon cinema features, this guy is the way to go right here. So once again, thanks to Camera Canada for putting a bunch of angst in my life, making me need another camera here in my little YouTube studio. I really appreciate you guys letting me have this for so long. It has been a ton of fun. Oh, did I mention the shutter button on the uh, R5C when you're taking photos? It just sounds like a puppy flopping onto a pillow. The thwop. It's so nice. It makes you want to take photos so elegant and photos, they, they come out wonderfully. Anyway, I got to go. This video 
is getting too long. Uh, once again, thanks so much to Camera Canna. Thanks to you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you got one, I'll be sure to answer it. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.